One thing that kind of bothers me is that coconut oil is commonly touted as a health food, but animal fats are not. Both are incredibly high in saturated fat and each have their pros and cons, but they're similar enough that the mainstream media contradicts, you know, the past 40 years of dietary dogma by suggesting coconut oil. Now, do we mean refined or virgin coconut oil? Refined does have many downsides due to chemicals and processes used in manufacturing. So from a volume perspective, you shouldn't really use large amounts of refined coconut oil. Focus on the raw, virgin, and organic products. There's quite a few elements to consider here. The large volume of coconut oil being produced. So there's certainly an incentive to sell it, market it. It's very cheap, common. So people try to throw it in just about any single health product that is being sold. And you have all of these vegans being anti-coconut oil, but then you have vegans sucking it down and saying it's okay because it doesn't contain cholesterol. But even the mainstream agrees that cholesterol isn't the problem, saturated fat is. And guys, I'm not gonna sit here and debate whether saturated fat or cholesterol is bad for you or not. I've probably done over a dozen videos on the subject, just search cholesterol or fat on my channel and this argument has been going on for 20 30 40 years back and forth just so people on both sides of the coin can continue to make money the only people that entertain this argument are either trying to sell meat or trying to sell vegan products or low cholesterol products and they're just going back and forth you know those vegans as well as people that are still brainwashed by the modern media are the only ones still saying that cholesterol is problematic. You know, as much as many of you have been enveloped in the keto, carnivore, and paleo circles for years, the conventional wisdom we see still believes that meat gives you a heart attack. You know, my mother's still eating salads every day. So what are the positives of coconut oil? It can be purchased raw as it's processed at a very low temperature. You know, it's high in saturated fat, so it's not prone to oxidation. And since it's a pure fat, it's very high in calories, as well as being non-perishable. So it's a great survival food, very easy to incorporate. It has antimicrobial and antifungal effects, so it can help with certain gut problems. And it's absent of vitamins and minerals. So it's a clean slate for nutrient synergy. You know, some of you might think that's a bad thing, but you know, the goal of humans existing is survival. So having a clean slate food is something that is actually better than you think. Unlike the majority of the fats we cook with now, coconut oil is the only healthy fat I can think of that's raw. I mean, of course, olive oil is raw and we did a video on olive oil, but coconut is unique in the sense that we aren't worried about oxidized omega-6 fatty acids since coconut oil is almost entirely saturated fat. When you go into a supermarket and browse through the oil section, pretty much everything is already heated, filtered, and even refined in some cases. What temperature were those fats heated to? How long were they heated for? Were they blended? Point is, you could be purchasing a fat that is already heavily oxidized before you even cook with it. You know, the most deadly example of this is how most restaurants use soybean oil to fry their foods. It's a heavily oxidized, rancid, super processed oil that is only further oxidizing as it's heated for hours and hours in that deep fryer. Now, saturated fat can oxidize. It's just far more stable and less harmful even when it does. What you can't dismiss though is that most animal fats from conventional animals, pork, chicken, duck, even some beef, have omega-6 in them because of what the animal is being fed. To the extent I would argue that coconut oil is a better option than most animal fats most people have access to. Because the coconut oil is raw, we don't have those oxidation concerns. Since it's low in omega-6, we don't have those oxidation concerns. And since organic coconut oil is commonly available, that removes most agrochemical herbicide, fungicide, pesticide, insecticide concerns as well. Animals do accumulate toxins, uh, so that's something to consider when avoiding those feedlot conventional animal fats. What has me somewhat excited is that coconut oil being pushed as healthy results in many people incorporating more saturated fat into their diets. This type of fat is necessary for many metabolic processes, cell health, certain molecules, and when people restrict their fat consumption due to fear-mongering in the modern media, Coconut oil is definitely helping a lot of people, including vegans. 
It's one of the few healthy fat sources vegans eat, and that's because all of the nuts, seeds, most plant fats they're consuming tend to heavily favor omega-6 fatty acids, making it impossible to maintain a good omega-6 to omega-3 ratio when being plant-based, unless you literally only consumed like avocado and coconut as your only sources of fat, even then, avocado still throws things off. Especially with what's going on in the world right now, survival foods are not something for crazy preppers anymore. It's a high calorie, very dense source of nutrition. You know, if you had a tub of coconut oil and a tub of whey protein, you could probably survive at least for a few months. Non-perishable, clean slate, don't have to worry about nutrient imbalances or too much of anything. Which brings us to comparing coconut oil to something like grass-fed beef tallow. And without going into crazy detail, the main consideration is if the tallow was overheated and oxidized. On Frankie's Free Range Meat, we try to render the tallow at as low of a temperature as possible. And I've encouraged you guys in the past to just use raw beef fat in a pan and render that every time you cook. That would be ideal. I do think coconut oil is healthier than heavily oxidized beef fat, even if grass fed. So be mindful of that temperature it was rendered or heated at. If you're trying to balance nutrients, then the fat soluble vitamins in rendered animal fat might throw things off a bit, which is where coconut oil might help, but that's very subjective and it's only required in extreme circumstances where maybe you know someone has a vitamin D deficiency. And on the topic of problems, if you have gut issues, the antifungal and antimicrobial properties of coconut oil have been observed. That being said, derivatives of coconut oil such as MCT oil and variations of MCT oil are concentrations of certain fatty acids that have those antimicrobial effects such as capric acid, capric acid, a lauric acid, and I told you guys back when I was having really bad stomach issues from iron overload, I drank a cup of MCT oil, which was wacky. The point is to incorporate MCT oil into an antimicrobial protocol if you're following one and see how you respond. You know, sometimes it helps, other times the saturated fat can make leaky gut worse. I guess the final thing to touch on is oil pulling, which is when people swish coconut oil around their mouth, and I think that's great, and I've tried that before, you know, but just having that oil in my mouth kind of grosses me out. And I think it's just a version of practicing better oral hygiene. So, you know, get a water flosser, some natural tooth powder, you know, brush your teeth and floss a little longer. I think you'll reap the same benefits. Uh, so overall, as with most foods, you know, coconut oil does look pretty good on paper, but see how you respond, see how you react to the food and this doesn't just apply to coconut oil itself. You know, you could use a variety of other coconut products. It's just more difficult to get those fresh, raw, and in an unaltered state. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave me a comment down below. If you'd like to support me further, you know how to do so down in the description. I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.